The culture is there. Different tongues. Boy, what an obstruction. I couldn't speak to anybody when I was in India, unless they knew English. It's a major obstruction. There's so much diversity in here, and yet after the work of salvation is done, they were clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice, salvation to our God, Amen. which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. A single voice. Amen. Well, that's going to be remarkable in that day when we all are together and sing that new song. Yeah. The song of Moses and of the Lamb, of the great victory and triumph we had. It's going to be a wonderful day. But when we sing, we sing in a single voice. We all came on the highway of holiness. We all depended on the same Savior. We all had that one faith. We all participated in one baptism. We all have one God and Father who is over all. Amen. See, we're not just united because we live the same way. We live the same way because we have a single hope, a single God who is our Father. We have a unity, brethren, that cannot be had anywhere in the world. That's right. Amen. We are actually united by nature. It's a marvelous. That's what we see here is a bride. I'll give you another picture of the bride. Philippians chapter 2, 2 and 4. How about this? Now, Paul knew this bride was united, and he speaks with this, kind of, with this in view. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So what is that? That's the bride. That's the bride. A bride, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the whole soul on the things of others. Why is that? Because, brethren, if you can't le learn to live united here, how are you going to be in this multitude? This is a united multitude. See? That's why we have to crucify the flesh. We're not making a provision for division. Why? Because of where we're headed. This is a bride, a united people. And it makes no sense, brethren, for there to be divisions amongst us here. They're not going to be there, so we're going to be resolved. We're not going to let them be here. We're just not going to let that happen. And there's nothing about the work of salvation that makes for division among believers. Amen. It just doesn't. This is a bride. How about this? In Ephesians chapter 4, 4 to 6, there's one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. See? We're united because God dwells in each of us. And that's what makes for unity when we come together. What a marvelous thing that is. But it is a bride. Good to know that. Now, this bride is a bride that is adorned. And I wanted, to, I wanted to find out, adorned with what? Remember, this is a bride from Christ's perspective. And adorning has to do with beauty. You know, one of the reasons why God made beauty, and I, this is just my opinion to this point, so we'll just step back from this, just to give you my opinion. I've been thinking about this. Beauty. You know, in the scriptures, there were certain people that were demonstrated as being very beautiful. I've been listening to some, some sermons about Joseph. Joseph was a very beautiful. A very attractive man. David. David was an attractive man. See, Rachel. Rachel was an attractive woman. Sarah was an attractive woman. Beauty. You see beauty in nature. Sometimes you get these glimpses of beauty in nature. Flowers and things like this. Why? Why did God put beauty in nature? So that you could see what kind of an attractive quality righteousness is from Christ's perspective. That's why it's there. That's why. See, what makes this bride so attractive to Jesus is that she is righteous. That's what it is. Now, let me just give you some scriptures on this because this is, this is good to know. I will re great, greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. That's what it is. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. See, that's what adornment is to Jesus. It's righteousness. It's righteousness. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof goeth forth as 
brightness. And as a result of that, he rejoices over us with singing. Why? Because you're righteous. That's why. That's the adorning quality, brethren, of the church is her righteousness. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. How so? To her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's what makes her beautiful, is her righteousness. No wonder the apostle, when looking to the mark, the prize, which is kind of what we're looking at here, said, I want to be found in his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he knew this was the thing that adorns the church to Christ Jesus, is its righteousness. You can imagine what happens when men who are called by the name of Christ give themselves to iniquity what that does in the sight of Jesus. It is repulsive to him. And thus he says to Laodicea, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Hmm? The righteousness is not there. And Jesus is drawn to a people that are a righteous people. Praise God that salvation has in fact given us the righteousness of God. Amen. Now, what does righteousness mean? We have more time, we could look at this more fully, but I just wanted to kind of get a general grasp here of what we're talking about from a, from a conclusive perspective, from the perspective of the culmination of the word. We've already been given righteousness, but we're kind of talking about righteousness on a higher level here. We talk about her being prepared and ready. Righteousness, from this perspective, we look at this culmination work of this work would be at least this, the removal of all remnants of unrighteousness. See, the work's not complete yet. Righteousness is imputed to us, and in our hearts there's no righteousness. I mean, there's no unrighteousness there. That's where the new nature is. See, that's the part of us that's born of God. It's not corrupt. It can't be molested by iniquity, but there is another part, isn't there? There is this body of death and the law of sin that's in my members and all the things associated with that. But when we look to a prepared bride, we see a bride that, as Brother Gibbon has said, is without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. She's completely holy. Mm -hmm. She stands faultless before the throne of the living God in exceeding joy, just as Jude said she would be. I'll tell you, that is the thing that plagues the people of God. The more sensitive you are to God and the more you grow in faith, the more these remnants of unrighteousness plague you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Amen. they will not plague you in that day. Hmm? They will not. That's, that's, that's good news. But more than that, this adornment can also mean this, the restoration of everything that unrighteousness has robbed of us. It's all going to be restored. Everything. I know that's very general, so let me get down to some real specifics of what I mean there. How about fellowship, for instance? Boy, death is a great robber of union and fellowship. Even now, we have fellowship with God by faith, but there are restrictions simply because we are in a body that's sinful. See, when we see him face to face and we have a body likened to his body, it's going to be a higher degree of fellowship, isn't it? See? We'll enter into a new dimension of fellowship with Christ Jesus. It won't be a different kind. It'll be more enhanced. Why? Because being adorned and prepared means all unrighteousness being removed and fellowship being heightened. See? As Brother Gimmon said, we'll be a pillar in the temple of our God. And as Sister Jude